Kelsia is a forge world close to the borders of the Veiled region in the Segmentum Tempestus. Established in the late 36th millennium, this forge world's original purpose was to serve as a supply station for rogue traders and explorative leads traveling into the Veiled region until a star fortress was established nearby. The star fortress was used as a supply station and slowly replaced Kelsher as one. This transition allowed the forge world to develop its manufactoriums en masse until its entire surface was covered. Kelsher was filled with nothing but expansive wastes and mountain ranges before its development and is now nothing but a planet of expansive metal with pipes, manufactoriums, corridors, gantiers and forges covering its surface. The massive amount of smoke produced by the manufactoriums has created a blanket of smog in the atmosphere, spanning from the planet's stratosphere until its exosphere. Mountains have been hollowed and used for either storage or Skitari bases, and the planet's molten core has been harnessed to be used as a heat source for the planet's many forges. Kelsha has produced many pieces of weaponry and armor, but are most notably known for the development of war machines and vehicles. One such machine is the Kelsha Pattern Sicarian Tank. This war machine is equipped with dual plasma cannons used as a main gun. The sponsors hold twin LAS cannons that shine a bright emerald beam at their enemies, caused by the mass amounts of energy that the war machine is given. Multiple exhaust pipes are placed on the chassis and weapons in order to ensure the superpowered weapons are cooled and do not explode when fired. These exhaust pipes also blanket the war machine in heavy smog that makes it difficult to be hit by enemy fire. Some of the Forge World's war machines are not completely based on power. Some are well known for their versatility in battlefield and modular design. Such is the Kelsha Pattern Rhino, which comes with a built-in storm bolter and ports for sponsor weapons on either side. It has larger and more numerous exhaust ports, so it may move quickly in the battlefield. Only in the dire circumstances is Kelsha willing to deploy their most treasured and powerful relic, the Night Gaunt class Warlord Battle Titan, named Morrigan, due to its holy status and its repair cost. This Warlord Titan was uncovered on Kelsha in the late 38th millennium and dates back to the Great Crusade. The Morrigan is equipped for charging into close combat and using its weaponry for hit and run attacks. On the left arm is a power lance to deliver quick but powerful blows, and on the right is a Gatling blaster to be fired at point blank with a devastating amount of firepower. Morrigan's carapace weapons are equipped to weaken an enemy before impact. This is why the Morrigan is equipped with an Apocalypse missile launcher to be fired when charging and a triple barrel turbo laser destructor to be fired before the charge to weaken an enemy. Led by Fabricator General Brigitte Dannon, Kelsha is known for developing heavily steam-based artillery and vehicle patterns as well as their skilled and powerful Skitari Legion split into four macrolades. All the Skitari in the Forge world sport the colors of Kelsha, red, blue, and brass in one form or another, and are resilient and skilled warriors. The first Macrolade is named as Knights of the Omnissiah and is well known for its many Skitari crusades and explorative fleets that search for STCs and relics in the name of the Omnissiah. Most of the tech adepts in this macrolade do not wear robes with the colors of Kelsha, but instead wear brass-colored plate armor and carry banners in the Forge World's red and blue. Under the first macrolade is an organization known as the Knights of the Round Council, a council of the macrolade's most intelligent and most skilled tech adepts, who lead the Skitari under their control into conquests in search of relics and for the honor and glory of the Omnissiah. The Knights of the Round Council are led by a tech priest named Brennin Arter, who has served Kelsha ever since its establishment. The most well-known unit within the First Macrolade are the Black Knights, relentless, skilled and stubborn Skitari clad entirely in black, who are used as frontline units and shock troops that will fight until their very last limb. These zealous Skitari are well known for being able to inspire other Skitari on the battlefield and are able to resist the most devastating of attacks from enemy fire. 
The fourth macrolade is named Victorianus after a reigning monarch during ancient Terra's Industrial Revolution. This macrolade is well known for its explorator fleets that often combat Xenus and for its many developed patterns of weapons used by the Forge world at present. The tech adepts are adorned in clockwork mechanisms in order to give honor to the developers of the Forge world's patterns of vehicles and weapons. Throughout the years, the Kelshan technology has improved and many allies and enemies have been made. One of the most notable enemies of the Forge world is the Heralds of Light chapter. While an explorator fleet traveled through the Halo stars, they came across a distress signal from the chapter and approached as an assisting force. The Forge world assisted the chapter against the Necron dynasty and suffered heavy losses, forcing them to retreat from the battle, leaving the Heralds against the Necron force that almost eliminated their chapter. The Tech Adepts of Kelsha reported to the High Lords of Terror that the Heralds of Light were exterminated and died honorable deaths. The Tech Adepts were wrong, however, as the remaining members of the chapters revealed themselves to be alive and held a grudge against the Kelshans for leaving them to die. In cooperative missions where the Heralds of Light and the Kelshan Skitari were involved, one side would always sabotage the other, and their feud remains until the present. Top Secret Inquisitorial Record Ordo Hereticus Inquisitor Calavis's 999 M41 Well now, this is getting intriguing. The Inquisition has ordered me to investigate Forge World Kelsha and its tech adepts after their false declaration of the extinction of the Heralds of Light chapter. They suspect heresy among the Forge World's tech adepts. Upon initial investigation, I found no points of heresy among the tech adepts of the Forge World, but I knew there was something not right about the Forge World. I dug deeper and eventually found the existence of a city deep under Kelsha's surface. This subterranean city is inhabited by the tech adepts and servitors, however they do not bear the heraldry of Kelsha. Instead, the outside of their robes are black and the inside is colored bone. Green is used as accent to the tech adepts' robes and silver replaced the Kelshan brass. On the respirator of every tech adept is a curved silver beak and the blue glow of their eyes is replaced with a ghastly lime green. Upon further investigation in the city, I was able to tie its connection to Kelsha as the secret fifth cohort of the fourth macrolade. The cohort is named the Medicum Plaga. Members of the Forge world collect Xeno technology and cure it in an expensive process that is supposed to soothe the tortured Xeno machine spirit. It requires that the Xeno machine spirit be rehabilitated for at least a century and a half. It is then transfused with over a 300-year-old machine spirit that has been treated well throughout the years. This allows the Xeno machine spirit to be integrated as imperial technology and used by the Forge World's tech adepts. Such heretical actions are irredeemable, especially since Xeno technology is used by the Skitari and they even improve upon our great technology with filthy Xenos. However, their tech adepts are more heretical than just infusing Xeno technology with imperial technology. The Kelshans have made an alliance with an Eldari craft world which allows them access to Eldari technology and military aid. The Kelshans have also made an alliance with the Angels of Kolth chapter which work together to combine Xeno, heretic and imperial technology for their own benefit, such as Tau drones that deploy Necron mind control scarabs, battle suits that are equipped with neutron lasers, warding drones that trap demons, and an abominable fusion of a Wraith Knight, Castellan robots, and Onager dune crawlers. I have seen files of a weak Necron shard trapped and observed in one of the Forge World's moons currently being studied. It has been released only once, in an extinction level threat, in the form of Tyranids. With all this tech heresy, I almost forgot my original purpose on this planet, to discover ties with the Heralds of Light. It took longer than expected. However, I was able to learn what happened after searching through the different memory banks. The Forge World's fourth macrolade explorator fleet had come to the aid of the chapter against the Necron force. 
The battle lasted for months until the Medicum Plaga was spotted gathering weaponry from unfaced Necron corpses by the Heralds of Light. This was reported to the head tech priest Ko Cullen, who then decided action needed to be taken. He ordered the Heralds of Light to spearhead the bulk of the Necron force, knowing the spearhead would fail, and it did. The Heralds were pushed back into a fortress which was then surrounded by Necrons, with the battlefield covered in a dense fog. Secretly, the Medicum Plaga, led by Kokulun, destroyed the Necron force and massacred all the Heralds, using the fog to cover their presence in the battle. They left the planet, believing the Heralds of Light were completely destroyed. Such heretical acts deem a declaration of excommunicato traitoris and an exterminatus for both the Forge world and for the Angels of Kolf. However, due to the fall of Cadia, I have instead allowed both Imperial organizations to continue existing in order to defend against the future Black Crusades that are within reach. I have also made the Forge world supply half of its current weaponry to the Imperium as the cost for their penitence.